What's up guys, this is Ashnox. It's time for the re-showcase of Solitaria of the Snow because she was buffed. She's much better now. She's got 15 skill ups. I try her out in various team compositions. So this hero, she's got better damage. She's got much better suitability. She's got more utility now. Very, very good. I mean, much better than before. Uh, so I'll break her down, you know, pros and cons to using this hero. So she's got an imprint for some effectiveness, which I like. And then her stats, the way I have her built, but you have to remember, there's a lot of different builds for this hero. You don't have to go this way. This is requiring so many different stats. It's ridiculous, but you can go for like crippling support, you know, uh, high speed, high effectiveness, uh, high suitability, let's say. But the way I have her built, 100% crit chance, 250% crit damage, 80% effectiveness, 253 speed, uh, some attack, some suitability on Tequila's Ancient Book. So I'm trying everything out basically. I want to show you guys her damage, what she's able to do. The gills means I'm using skill 3 into the skill 1, 15 skill ups. We'll see what she's able to do. So the skill number 3, reduce buff duration by one turn. Very good to take out immunity set off of the enemy. And it's important that it happens, right? You don't want that to get evaded. You don't want to miss that. You don't want the 15% innate resist to trigger. Because that would be terrible, right? You take the immunity off because of that. Immunity set. And then you land stun. 100% chance. Hopefully, right? And then you land the stun. That's huge. Stun is so powerful. And also you're pushing back their combat chance by 30%. So stun, they're losing their turn. They have to gain all their combat chance on the next turn to go, right? That is a big deal. Now, this hero has a big problem. And that problem is enable to buff debuff. If she gets that debuff, oh, you are in big trouble. Not as bad as before her buff, but still really bad. Because her skill 3 gives her a barrier that scales off of her maximum health. That you will not get from buff block. And then she gets stealth at the end of her turn. That's good. That's much better than before. Before it was on skill 3 for 2 turns. So, I like that. But if you have buff block, buff block, the stealth is not happening. Also, she get a special buff, unique buff for herself called Daydream, which cannot be removed. But if you have buff block, it's not happening on her. And you need the Daydream to make things happen. You, the Daydream, what happens is that you have a chance to land one of the four debuff. Uh, there's attack break, there is decreased hit chance, there's speed down, and there is the enable to buff debuff. Quite powerful, uh, you know, debuff boosts your survivability. But if you uh, don't have the Daydream, that's not happening. And then the skill 1 is now a single target attack, which is huge. So good for suitability increase. But the skill 1, uh, if you have Daydream buff on her, she will trigger an extra attack that hits everyone. And it has a 20% chance to stun each target, 20% chance, which is really good. It's like an Abyssal Crown. So I really like that. But the single target attack of skill 1 into the extra attack which hits everyone is a big deal. Because you can choose to attack a hero that doesn't have a counter set. Elbrus, uh, I mean Elbrus, maybe you attack them because they do have Elbrus. Um, so that's really good. You know, you don't get a bunch of counter attacks in her face. Which means she would just drop like a fly the way she was built before. Like So much better the way she is now after her buff. Really liking that. And the skill 1, the initial attack is a single target attack. It has a 75% chance to remove one buff from the target. So that's strong as well. It can definitely come in handy. Back to the skill number 3, right? You got decrease buff duration by one turn. Into the stun. And a 30% CR pushback. Love it. That's great. And then she gets barrier scaling off of her maximum health. Good, good, good. Because that's a really increase right there. She goes in stealth at the end of her turn. Which means that in stealth, you're taking 50% less damage from attacks that hits everyone. When you have barrier, if they don't break barrier, you are staying in the stealth. That, that's so good. And even if she gets knocked out of stealth, or stealth gets removed or something like that, right? Well, uh, next time she goes, at the end of the turn, she, she'll go in stealth again. So that's definitely very good, very powerful. Especially if they have heroes that only attack one hero at a time. They don't have heroes that can knock her out of stealth. Or maybe that hero... You know, it's a fall in Cecilia, like a hero that doesn't have big damage. And then she's just going to be protected by the barrier. The barrier will not break, which means she's going to be just staying in the stealth uh, much more easily, uh, which is definitely powerful. Now, the barrier is scaling off of her maximum health. So if you go for a build that is like you're pumping that speed, that effectiveness, that health, 
that defense on her and you're not worrying about offensive power offensive damage you're not worrying about attack you're not worrying about crit chance crit damage that's a big deal the barrier will be you know uh stronger and she's gonna survive longer and she's gonna just do her job perfectly because she's gonna be crippling the enemy uh, you're not gonna be having to like worry about her going down because she's too squishy right uh the enemy will not be able to burst her down too easily with like a hero or two so that's definitely a very good right there if you build her that way and you don't need to have the Gil's engine book on this hero if the battle drags on the Gil's engine book loses value so what happens is that there is that artifact which i definitely want to try it on her but sadly it's on my third account it's maxed out but i don't have the artifact on this account this is the second account the artifact is the limited artifact of fairy tale tenebria fairy tale for a nightmare that artifact seems so good on her yes it will not happen on the skill three but as soon as she's landing those skill ones into the extra attack that hits everyone that's going to be tri triggering that artifact and that artifact what it does is it deals up to 1500 fixed damage every time you trigger the extra attack uh, that hits everyone everyone will be taking 1500 fixed damage up to 1500 if you have it fully uh, limit broken at plus 30 and also you have 60 percent chance to remove a buff from each of the target that's very strong because if you don't worry about uh you know crit crit damage and attack on her you can just have that artifact and especially if you're fighting a team that has high damage mitigation high defense because right now with my stats guys you have to understand i'm dealing like around 2000 damage versus like really tanky heroes and that's not that great but if you're like dealing pure damage up to 1500 per target every time that skill one is triggering the extra attack that hits everyone that's a big deal right there man like could you imagine you have so many more stats for speed effectiveness and survivability and barry's gonna be thicker and you could have more effectiveness so your debuffs will be landing more reliably and uh, she's gonna be getting more turns which means she can kind of like st not stun lock but she can stun pretty heavily uh one hero right that hero will be not doing too much she does have 18 percent effectiveness from her awakening too so it makes it so much easier to land your debuff plus the imprint the self imprint more effectiveness right there and uh that's not the only way you can build her right you could have a hybrid build uh you could have some damage on her but you don't push the crit damage too high uh maybe you have 100 percent crit chance to you know work with uh, challenger domino maybe combo her with c dom uh maybe you have some attack built in her but you don't have crit or crit damage build but at least you're gonna have more stats for speed effectiveness and health and defense so yeah definitely different ways to build this hero she does have 115 base speed guys so this is not the right hero for an opener uh, if you're fighting teams with 128 base speed openers you're just gonna get outsped too easily even if you're using an imprint because they could just use a speed imprint as well and just they're just gonna open on you and it's gonna be a disaster especially if they land buff block which is such a massive weakness of this hero that you have to remember and deal with it don't fight a team that can put that on you so easily make sure you can cleanse it deal with that right other artifacts that you can have on her there's the five star artifact called bloody rose it will give her up to 60 percent effectiveness on single target attack which means skill three and the skill one before the aoe extra attack right and that's very good 60 percent effectiveness nothing to scoff at right plus the 18 uh, percent from awakening the imprint like you might not need such so much effectiveness on her to reliably land you know the stun uh so that's really cool right there uh so that's definitely a viable artifact another one could be of course the gears engine book is so strong because you're making things happen as soon as she goes skill three and to the skill one is a big deal right and something i didn't mention is that skill three you get an extra turn for 20 souls right but also extend the duration of the buff the barrier by one turn so you don't lose a turn there which is cool and the skill three only has three turn cooldown which is insane guys imagine your soul burning that's down to two turn already uh, so like you're ready to use a skill three again so uh, so soon and so that's it like the early turns will allow her to kind of like stun lock a hero if she has enough speed and that hero is a slow hero especially if they don't have any way to cleanse that off it is going to be a big big deal so definitely something to watch out for if you're facing a solitary of the snow right um so yeah now this hero the daydream buff that she gets that cannot be removed 
but can be blocked from buff block, it's pretty cool, right? Like, but it's so important that you have it. You got the attack break, the reset chance, speed down, and you have the enable to buff debuff that you can apply. So that can apply, uh, can be applied on the enemy when she uses skill three, can be applied when she uses the skill one with the single target attack, and then the extra attack that hits everyone. All those are a chance to land one of those debuff, which is pretty solid right there. Pretty solid. So I'm definitely happy with her performance now. I'm going to showcase her in World Arena. I need to climb, uh, so definitely expect that. And uh, you can see Celine is in the group too. She was buffed. I showcased her. You can go and check it out. Uh, so now she's so much better. So the area of the snow is much better now. Like the fact that she does a single target attack with the skill one instead of attacking everyone straight off the bat is a big deal. All the counter attacks we were taking before means that she just dropped like a fly. She gets knocked out of stealth. It's a bad time. It's a bad time. But now it is much, much better. Also, her damage was increased because you get a free single target attack on skill one which just adds up. If you do the combo with the Gil's Ancient Book of Skill 3 and to the Skill 1 single target attack and to the AoE after, even without attack buff on her, she's able to like, kind of like take out a lot of heroes just because of, because of that, or at least cripple that hero. So like, if you try to land a stun, but it gets resisted, it doesn't happen. What you can do, well, you can just decide to Skill 3 into Skill 1 on that target, right? Or you could Skill 3 someone, stun them, and then Skill 1 someone else, and then soften them up, or maybe take them out if they don't have layers of protection. So you definitely have different ways that you can go about it, but she definitely disrupt the enemy. Uh, it is random, the debuff she can land, but at least the skill, the stun from Skill 3 and the Skill 1 AoE, all those chances to trigger stun. Abyssal Crown is another one, guys. You could have increased chance to land stun when she's Skill 1, one chance from single target attack, and then the AoE has a stun chance, right? But then Abyssal Crown is another stun chance, so that could be quite dangerous in longer battles. Anyways, let us know what you guys think about all that in the comment section. That's it for this one. I'm Ashton Nice. Good luck with all y'all. Do peace out for now.